सो हेलो गाइस दिस इज़ माई वीडियो ऑन डिस्क्रिप्टिव एपिडेमियोलॉजी और वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इन द एपिडेमियोलॉजी सीरीज सो बेसिकली वी वी टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्टेप्स ऑफ द डिस्क्रिप्टिव एपिडेमियोलॉजी सो द फर्स्ट स्टेप विच वी सी हियर इज डिफाइनिंग द पॉपुलेशन और द सैम्पल पॉपुलेशन सो इस इट इज द पॉपुलेशन इन विच वी डू द स्टडी ठीक है then you have to define the disease so after once you have defined the population kis population mein aap study karne ja rahe ho uske baad aapko disease define karna padta hai so for defining the disease you have to choose certain inclusion criteria and certain exclusion criteria inclusion refers to the people who we, you will choose and exclusion refers to people who will you delete ki these people are not suitable for your studies like certain age par or certain gender or certain group of people so that way you have to include as well as exclude and then you have to also give a diagnosis criteria that who that what are the clinical features which will decide that this is a particular disease which you are studying and that for that you need to give an operational definition now what is an operational definition see operational definition is one by which the disease or a condition can be identified and measured in the defined population with a degree of accuracy like uh, in talking about sim this is in the bookish term but in the simple terms if you say when you give like uh, the book mein koi definition di rehti jaise ki about um, man lo measles diya hai so you will say that as like is respiratory tract infection but that doesn't defines that what are the symptoms and all that so when so simply when you say that it is a respiratory tract infection which is having the prodromal stage with fever and then it has got rashes and then copleic spots are present and all this you will be describing the certain features so that any person who is a layman also can identify the disease as the particular disease and can help out in the study so that definition which actually works in operation is known as an operational definition theek okay? hai then after this you need to describe the disease so first you have describe define the population then you define the disease and now you describe the disease so this is the most important step in this so first of all you have to describe the disease in terms of time then in terms of place and then in terms of person so if we talk about in times in terms of time so here you have three times of three types of fluctuations the first is short term so first of all you have the short term short term fluctuations which is also known as an epidemic so talking about epidemic what is an epidemic it is a sudden rise in number of cases which is clearly in excess which is greater than 80% or greater than two standard deviation more than the expected population so when a disease occurs more than the expected occurrence of the disease in the previous years or in the previous years to go then it is said to be an epidemic theek okay? hai मान लीजिए कि यहाँ पर अभी पोलियो का एक भी केस आ जाता है दैट वुड बी एन एपिडेमिक बट सर बट जैसे कि बारिश के मौसम में डेंगू के केसेस आते हैं तो दैट इज़ नॉट एन एपिडेमिक बिकॉज इट इज़ द एक्सपेक्टेड अकरेंस सो व्हेन देयर इज एन अनएक्सपेक्टेड अकरेंस ऑफ अ डिजीज देन इट इज सेट टू बी एन एपिडेमिक एंड हाउ मच अनएक्सपेक्टेड इट इज शुड बी मोर देन टू स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रीक्वेंसी ठीक है then you can have three types of epidemics slow epidemics like diabetes obesity these are slow epidemics they gradually increase they may show rise or fall then you have the common source epidemic and then you have the certain propagated epidemics which move from one person to another like the corona virus is an epidemic now it has formed into an pandemic but it is traveling from one person to another okay then you have the periodic fluctuations now periodic fluctuations refer to cycles or seasons seasonals but as there are certain disease which happen in particular season like in summers you have the gastroenteritis and diarrheal disease and the food borne diseases sunstroke and heat stroke more commonly and in monsoon you have the road traffic accidents snake bite cases dengue and malaria and then winters you have the high chances of upper respiratory tract infection strokes and mri mi spring may you have the varicella and the measles so these are seasonal trends and then certain diseases have got cyclical trends that disease comes in cycles like measles comes every 2 to 3 years influenza every 7 to 10 years rubella every 6 to 7 years so that is known as cyclical trends then you have the long term fluctuations these are certain disease which show the secular trend secular trends refers to the definite movement in one direction so either they show a rise in the frequency of the disease over a long period of times or they show a decline 
like the cardiovascular diseases hypertension they have got a secular trend of increase in number of disease whereas the tb diphtheria plague polio have decreased have a decreasing trend over the decades okay then we have the place distribution so place distribution can have variation in terms of international variations or the national variations like if you see in japan you have increased cases of stomach cancers in usa you have increased cases of cancer breast and in india you have increased cases of carcinoma cervix and oral carcinomas more like in cervix is in females and oral carcinoma is in males then there can be certain diseases which have more tendency to occur in the developing countries and certain in have tendency to occur in the developed countries then there are certain diseases in national variations you can see like in kangri carcinoma occurs in kashmir in goiter belt you have the in the sub himalayan regions and then you have the carcinoma forest disease in parts of karnataka and then leprosy is common in certain parts of this uh, lucknow and uttar pradesh basically uttar pradesh and bihar and then you have diabetes mellitus more common in punjab so that is the national and international variations now we come on to the person wise variations so first is age like certain disease occurs at particular age so certain diseases occur at a particular age like measles occurs in children rubella can occur in less than 3 years also and in more than 10 to 16 years so it shows bimodal peak hodgkin's lymphoma also similarly shows a bimodal peak it occurs below less than 35 years and then more than 8 50 years cvs occurs cvs diseases occurs in older child older age groups theek hai then gender certain diseases are more common in males like snake bites road traffic accidents zoonosis and in females you have more commonly the chronic bronchitis and thyroid disorders certain diseases are of ethnicity like you belong to a particular region and because of that you have developed the disease theek hai then marital status like incidence of carcinoma cervix is less in nulli paris women ठीक है मोर इन मल्टी पैरा वुमेन देन ऑक्यूपेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ऑक्यूपेशन यू हैव सर्टन डिजीज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सोशो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस दिन बिहेवियर स्ट्रेस एंड माइग्रेशन ऑल दीज कैन हैव अ लॉट इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर डिजीज प्रोसेस सो दिस वॉज द मेन स्टेप दैट इज डिस्क्राइबिंग द डिजीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाइम प्लेस एंड पर्सन इफ सम वन आस वॉट इज डिस्क्रिप्टिव एपिडेमोलॉजी इट इज द स्टडी विच डिस्क्राइब द डिजीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाइम प्लेस एंड पर्सन सिंपल डेफिनेशन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज द मेजरमेंट ऑफ द डिजीज how will you measurement how will you measure the disease for measuring the disease you have got number of variables which we will see like a, so you can do with that descriptive descriptive epidemiology may use a cross sectional study or a longitudinal study to obtain the estimates of magnitude of health and disease problems in human population so once you have described the disease you can then go on to certain cross sectional methods and then you can measure the results which you have obtained then the next step is the comparing with the known indices like whatever you results you have got then you will compare with the known indices like uh, as if the results of previous years what was the incidence last year lot of uh, prevalence last year all that with not the pre- incidence but the prevalence of the last year you can compare that theek okay? hai so that is comparing with the known indices and then after which you will formulate a hypothesis what is hypothesis it is an assumption without proof now since you have not done any cross sectional study yet theek okay? hai now since you have just studied the disease occurrence matlab you have just calculated what is the available indices the this year and the last year now when you will be doing the interpretation of this using the odds ratio or the certain population attributed risk or relative risk certain mathematics when you will apply then you can actually get into the proof whether this is good or not like in the odds ratio if the ratio comes to be equal to 1 then it is certain factor this is not a risk factor or neither it is a protective factor but if it is less than 1 it is a protective factor if it is greater than 1 it is a risk factor so all that kinds of experiments or the data is uh, evaluated or interpreted that forms the that proves whether your hypothesis is good or not it is at this point of time that we you seeing the things you can say that this can be a particular risk factor of that sub- certain problem but you are not very sure you can be sure only when you do a randomized control trial or a case control study or a cohort study means when you do the analytical studies or the experimental studies not simply by the descriptive study okay so this was the last step that is formulation of hypothesis now this hypothesis should specify the following 
First is the characteristic of a person, the specific cause being concerned, then the expected outcome, the dose response relationship and the time response relationship. These are certain things which you can add down from your book also and you, or either you can listen to my audio. What are the uses of descriptive epidemiology? You can calculate the magnitude of disease, you can give a clue to disease etiology and you can also obtain the background data for organizing and evaluating and this descriptive epidemiology can contribute to a particular study. So this was the basic steps in descriptive epidemiology. You are going to be asked only these steps and the steps form the very important thing. First you define the population, then you define the disease, then you describe the disease and you measurement of disease, then comparing with known indices and then formulation of hypothesis. So these six steps are very important and then this third step in terms of time, place and person is very very important. Thank you guys. Please do like and subscribe my video and also comment. You can also see these notes on the Instagram page whose link is given in the bio section of this med school page. Thank you friends.